fuck? Oh. Oh, uh, welcome back, everybody. I thought I was in my ship. I just loaded in the game. I forgot I wanted to show you this cutscene before I left. So, uh, welcome back to part 13. Um, we're gonna do some stuff today. We will actually get things done today. Don't worry. If we had known anything about the Thorian, Exogeny would never have been given the permits to start a So I just came here to the Citadel to do some stuff. I got most of it done already. survived. We can't afford to have too many failures out in the Traverse. It's one of our major expansion regions. Um, that's my job. All in a day's work, Ambassador. Sometimes I envy you, Commander. Sometimes I envy you, Commander. Have you please never worried about the long-term consequences? consequences? No, you leave that to me. I I'll calm down. Big picture, and usually it's not very pretty. Man, I'm not gonna get a chance to talk about Odina's uh, character that much, Just but Odina's character is Comes is like, oh, it's the it's the politician that's like, oh, look, he's very pissy and annoying, and he clearly is cares about politics more than he cares about realism, which is a big problem when it comes to when you start going into the working field. If you depending on if you deal with certain entities that you work for like i've worked for the government before and it's like there's a very big difference between the administration and the people who see the clients every day and there's their that divide is just like oh it was the people that care about reaching the numbers and not things that apply to our daily life and then there's the people that deal with daily life and like you know the numbers just seem to get in the way um, but there's a middle ground to be met there uh, but for udina specifically it's just his character is always very political and very like, oh, he's the very annoying diplomat. But yes, Commander. like, it's it's very it's very cliched and kind of annoying. And it's it's not more than it than it is. But in Mass Effect Three, it almost becomes good, and then it turns crazy again. Uh, Novaria. What can you tell me about Novaria? Novaria's trouble, always has been. The whole planet's basically a center for corporations to conduct illegal... So we're getting a little bit look of, uh... Well, whereas Pharos gave us a look at the colonial background of New Frontiers, Novaria is giving us the technological frontier of illegal experiments outside the law of space. Or outside the city of the law of space. So we're gonna leave. <laughs> so today I'm going to do Garrus' loyalty. Well, I keep saying loyalty. Mass Effect 2 has trained my brain too much. Um, I'm going to take the elevator. Haha! -ha! It's been a while since I made jokes about the elevator, but... You know, whatever. Um, so I'm going to do Garrus' today, and if I have time, I'm actually going to do one more, which I think I have time for. Uh, I'm going to do a different quest. Not a uh, character quest, but maybe Shepard's character quest. And we'll... You'll see more about that when we get there. Elevator ride. Going down. You know talking? After years of poor economic oh. performance, Exogeny has announced oh, yeah, they're talking about Pharos. research colony on Pharos is finally returning a profit. Yeah. New discoveries and a dedicated colonization effort have finally paid off for Exogeny. Exogeny That's good. Rose sharply with also, I helped. With investors pleased at this surprising news. Yeah, so they're doing great. Uh, I forget what exactly changes in the news report if I kill Zhang. I mean, if I don't kill Zhang. But, I don't know. I think it's like a little bit of a boost. But they do fine either way. It's like a... It's it's really... In hindsight, it really confuses me. It's like, why bother doing this Paragon Renegade check for something so trivial that doesn't really affect much when it comes to the colonial development? It, it baffles me every single time. I don't understand it. Like, it's it's one of the highest checks in the whole game. And like because I, I because I always do it as the second planet I visit, it's I never have enough points. Reporter Unless I do a new game plus. He recently attempted to land an interview with Commander Shepard, the first human spec. Oh, that's the interview Commander we did. Shepard answered difficult questions, demonstrating that under that military uniform is a keen diplomatic mind. We'll have exclusive footage. Yeah, see, and depending how you do that interview, that that uh that news announcer is just like, oh, Shepard walked out of the interview, or Shepard divulged way too much information, which you can do about your investigation. Um, what else? Oh, I did the Conrad Werner thing. Sorry, I did it off screen. I wasn't even thinking, uh, but then I kind of thought about it, and it's not that important. 
He's just a fan who goes way too overboard. Like, when I first played the game, I thought it was more than it was. Like, I thought it was going to be, like, stalkerish. But he's just kind of, like, some someone you pity. Yeah, unfortunately. I always love this. I may have mentioned this before, but, like, the next two Mass Effect games don't have this anymore. And Andromeda. Stand by. When you go to Hub World, you can just kind of, like, do this. I know the game's loading. But I just, I like that it takes the time to do this. Just the decontamination. Decontamination in progress. It feels very realistic. It's a slow process, but I like things that keep me immersed. Logged. The commanding officer is aboard. Exo it's me. Hmm, that's me. I just took a Zyrtec before recording, and I haven't sneezed once, so thank God for that. And thank God for me. This episode sponsored by Zyrtec. Not really, though. Save. Chaska. Yeah, I was doing some stuff. I was true to my word, and I did a little bit of a cleanup with some other quests. I did the, um, Helena Blake quest. I got her to give up peacefully. You know, the woman who was doing the gang stuff. Um, it was, it was I. Where is it? There it is. Mm. It's her, it's Herschel. I'm pretty sure. Let's go. But yeah, so we're here to talk about uh, Garrus's quest line today. I mean, I guess it's there's not much to it, but you know, I want to show you guys. So here we are. Um, I mentioned it before. Garrus's quest line is basically dealing with red tape of police work. Pretty simple, pretty cut and dry. Not something that's exclusive to a sci-fi setting. Um, and at this point, we kind of understand the premise that, like, oh, you know, other places also have, you know, that modicum of daily activity, of daily frustrations. So this is just a continuation of that um, kind of story. Klugon. Klugon's hydrogen helium atmosphere is given a fairly dramatic emerald tint by chlorine and ionized gases. It has nearly 100 moons. Well, I'll be damned. Da -da -da -da. Not a single one. Hold on. There it is. I saw you. Sometimes you can see a little glowing glint. They're usually around the asteroid belts, although sometimes they're not. My, mining minerals has never been as simple as this. Never, ever not been as simple as this. Do, 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 don't care. Kobaku, well, not a lot of planets to serve. Alright. Do, 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 do. Let's see here. The Fidele is a cow, cow loon. Class modular conveyor of human design, in addition to standard cargo bay, the whole has several biological research modules attached. Private owner, Dr. R. Hart. Let's go! So in case you forgot, we're here to find the uh, escaped uh, crazy organ stealer that Garrus uh, tried to track down the Citadel. And during his time there, he decided, not decided, he was trying to combat the idea of like whether civilian casualties are worth catching the criminal. Basically. Basically. I'm just gonna bring out my gun and I pull out my gun. Um so we're here to kind of continue that line of thought for Garrus, and this is Garrus's kind of coming of not coming of age because he's old enough, but like coming to an understanding of how the world is in black and white. This is something that will continue in Mass Effect 2. And in Mass Effect 3 he kind of finally stops caring about it, but you know. By the way, these look exactly like the Thorian Creepers, um, and and the husks. So don't don't be looking for too much like amazing detail thrown in. I I was just I, when I was playing the game a little bit earlier, I was just talking about how like I'm really I'm really stupid for like not picking a biotic because that would have super helped me in this game. If I play Mass Effect 2 at some point in the near future, I have to remember to. To pick biotic. Well, no, because Mass Effect One is where the biotics are really OP and they're like they're great to have. So I don't know. I want to have a fun time playing the game though, and I really picked Infiltrator just so I could like reminisce about my first playthrough as an Infiltrator. Oh shit! I okay. So I've been playing Andromeda, and I forgot that in Andromeda, select uh, pressing the back button is is not grenade. It is put away your gun, and in this game, it's B to put away your gun. So that was my mistake. 
I apologize. Um, but you know, it happens. Yeah, I went back to play a little bit more drama, and I wanted to see what the female character was like. Um, she's okay. Her voice actress is pretty good. I, her design is, her ponytail is permanently like floating. I don't know why they would make that kind of hairstyle if they couldn't maintain it. Like, she, look at this Shepard's default hairstyle. It's not complicated. You don't have to do any crazy physics with it. So, I mean, that game has animation bugs as it is. So whatever. Hello. One, two, three. Okay. Uh, sorry for everybody at home. Um, I don't know what happened. I walked into the conversation with Doctor Saleon, and like it, the I was I took a, I luckily I looked at my capture, and for some reason it was bugging out like crazy, like the it just wasn't working right. The audio wasn't coming in at all. I just restarted it, and it's fine now. Looks like it's okay. If it happens again, I'll you know I'll probably load a previous save I just saved before I got here, so it's not a big deal. Um, but the only thing you missed was I walked in, uh, the doctor said, oh, hello, thank you, you're here to help me. Garrus says, oh, that's doctor, that's him, that's the doctor. And now he said, what, my name is Dr. Hart, please get me out of here. So, I always looked at this part and thought that's really stupid, even as a kid, even in 2007, when I was like, how old am I now? When I was like 12? Uh, because the subtitles say who he is. Look, right there. He's like, my name is Dr. Hart. Like, no, it's not. It's Saleon over there. Look, I can see it. <laughs> the subtitles give away who he is. Like, I, I get the feeling they wanted to maybe make you go on a limb to trust Garrus. Um, but, like, role-playing, you don't know it's him. Because you can't see his subtitles. But either way, you believe it's Garrus. So it's it's no problem. I'd harvest your organs first, but we don't have the time. You're crazy. He's crazy. Please, don't let him do this to me. Now, Garrus is right, that is him. But Garrus is also showing a kind of disregard for human decency uh, and due process. Like, we have him. He's not necessarily going to get away. So, what we're going to do is turn him back down. We'll take him in, drop him off at the military. But we have him. We can't let him get away. Not again. He's, he's right here. We have him at gunpoint. If he dies, we'll never know what he's been up to, or how he did it. I like playing moral characters that like to keep people alive, simply because it's more entertaining to watch a lot of people be on stage okay. and like live with consequences. You're right. Um, and I like being able to punish someone over the long term, then punish someone over the short term. You owe the commander. Short term? Oh, thank you so And then this happens anyways. Alright, shoot him. Shoot him. There you go. And so he dies anyway. What was the point of that? So you need Paragon points for this, even though it's not highlighted. Highlighted. Um, there are some prompts like this that are, aren't are highlighted, but they, when you don't have enough points, it shows that they're grayed out. So this, I love this line a lot. And I'm just going to let Shepard say it, honestly. You can't predict how people will act, Garrus, but you can control how you'll respond. In the end, that's what really matters. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I ever met anyone like you, Commander. Well, I guess we're done here. Medical equipment is stained with the blood of many species, pale blue, violet, orange, and more than a few dark red, but his work is ended here. Time to head back to Normandy. So that's it. That's Garrus' quest. He kind of realizes there's more to the world than just, you know, putting away criminals. And it's just like, I, I get the feeling Garrus, the reason he works so hard is because he's trying to prove something. Um, whether to himself or maybe to his father figure that he ends up talking about later. Um, he's talked about him a little bit, I think. But, like, you know, you don't... Your inability to stop the criminals doesn't necessarily say something about you. You know, that's that's not the end of the world. It's, it's okay. Um, you can't control... There's gonna be bad people out there. You can't control what they do, you know? You can only control... Damn it. I was talking. You can only control how you react to those situations. Damn it, I meant to destroy those. Anyways, I've been cleaning up my inventory, so don't worry. Off screen, so it's fine. Um, I'll use these and then throw them away, I guess. Pretty good. We don't need this. All right. Oh, I leveled up. Um, but yes, you can only, like, you can't control what other people do. As a cop, especially. Like, you just have to control how you react to that situation. That's, that's all you can do at the end of the day, is 
control how you respond. You know, you can you can do exactly you can you can try to meet out a reaction you think is appropriate to the crime or you know crime and punishment in general, or you can act like a decent human being. It's a very s- small quest and a very small piece of dialogue that basically amounts to um, uh, what was I gonna say? Not not treat people how you want to be treated. That's 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 kind of that golden rule. But it it comes down to. The idea that oh, it's very something that's very popular in The Walking Dead. I just remembered, um, where in order to maintain society, you can either hold yourself above the activity of the criminals and hold yourself to a higher standard as well as those around you, or what you can do is just be a criminal to take care of criminals. You can act as they act in order to deal justice or to deal what you think is justice because you think they've earned that. And it's there's two different ways of, of basically handling that situation. And that's one of them. All right, and because we have time, we're gonna talk about something else, a little surprise mission. Where is it? God, video game. So loud in my ears. So this mission you can unlock by just coming here or you can unlock it by um, like hacking a terminal on Novaria. But we're just gonna come here now because I'm doing kind of personal quests and I think this counts as one. You'll see what I mean, though. Message coming in. Here we go. Patching it through. I've received some information I thought you'd want to see. So this is Hackett again, and Hackett so is just a voice in this game. Lines. He only appears in, actually physically, in the Before DLC of 2, and then in 3, he's like a major character. Uh, what? Former scientist. Whoops, sorry, I didn't put my phone on quiet. a project they'd like to keep secret. We found a connection between the scientists you what's huh they all worked on a classified project several years ago on a coos this can't have anything to do with what happened to me on a coos so if you recall our shepherd's background our war war history background is that she was a survivor on the planet of coos where a bunch of thresher moths which we've already seen um, a nest of them attacked her unit I just thought and she was the only ones to survive there was one other scientist on the project. so apparently this scientist has something to do with what happened there. It's not entirely clear, but some people have been killing the scientists associated with that project. So we're gonna go down there, see what's up, party hardy, and uh, deal with some traumatic uh, past events for Shepard. And uh, we're gonna scan some planets. I mean, obviously. We're gonna mine them out for all they're worth. I'm basically Galact. No, in Mass Effect 2, you become Galactus. You mine out planets until they're empty. Comfortably hot. Okie dokie. <laughs> I'm gonna bring Kanan, and because Garrus was just with me, and I feel like we didn't get enough of Garrus, let's just bring him too. More Garrus. Transformers, robots in disguise, are all Transformers. I was singing Transformers in a previous episode, but I cut it out. So, here you go. What am I doing? Oh, yes, these two abilities. Yes! Uh, assault training is more important right now. Okie dokie. Are all Transformers. So, we're here to deal with the traumatic part of Shepard's background. And we already did, I told you, I think one of the best, probably, dialogue missions in the game is uh, Talitha with I Remember Me. I like it a lot. I think it's very poignant. I think it talks about a heavy subject. Um, you know, I don't think it's the best written thing in the universe, or even, you know, fiction in general. But I like that this game takes time to do it. And it's unfortunate that you can only get it if you're if you have that specific background for that uh, for your shepherd's profile. The the backgrounds that come for your your war history though that that always these these quests are always here. You can always do them, but your personal connection to them will shift. Um, I think this quest actually is kind of bugged, so that it's shepherd always feels like like in shepherd's dialogue for this quest 
it seems like they always have a personal connection to to it. I'm not sure why. But um, I think I think canonically, so canonically, this is supposed to be like the default shepherd's background, right? Um, yeah. So I think it's why it's supposed to have such a poignant impact on Shepard's character and dialogue, um, which makes it even dumber in Mass Effect 2. But we'll get into that in a little bit, because this, this the events of this quest um, are part of a subplot that gets weaved into Mass Effect 2. There's, there's a there's a big subplot that involves this quest and another one and a few other ones for Mass Effect 2, and they don't really come to a great conclusion or a great payoff. It just leads to the buildup of an entity that gets retconned into existence in Mass Effect 2. Or the entity gets retconned into a different entity than it should be in Mass Effect 2 because someone wanted their comic book dick sucked hard. I know that was very elegant of me to say, but you're welcome. I'm curious if I should even like beat around the bush on this or should I just tell you what it is? Because everyone who's played the game knows. Do I even have, hold on, do I have Kohoku's mission? Yeah, you know, okay, it's it's servers. So it has, it has to do with servers. So remember when we were in that earlier episode and Kohoku was like, oh, there's a rogue group called Cerberus. You know, I think they're hunting me down. They, they killed my team. Some They've gone rogue. This has to do with that. No, no, Transformers. Ooh, minerals. Do I dare grab the minerals? Hey! Gotcha. I see you. I see you moonwalking. Hold on. Right, let me just take a pot shot here. Right, I missed. Well, they're there somewhere. Do, 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 do. What's that? Oh, debris. Debris. Ooh, doo I feel like I really came down from my Andromeda hate train before. Like, I kind of got a little bit out of my system, but it'll come back. Don't you worry. It'll come back. I, I play Andromeda a little bit in bursts just to feel it again, stronger than ever. Stop shooting. Uh, do, 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 do. I get so much money from that. I don't get nearly that amount of money in Andromeda for just doing random shit. Hey! I knew I should have blown up that barrel. I see the other guy there too, I just gotta grab him. I think there's only four people, so I kill like three. Um. But yeah, so. No, I'll. I'll no, I gotta. You gotta. You will. You'll just watch. And I. And then I will explain. God, that's cruel. I mean, I think death is instant instantaneous at that Area point. Secure. So, you know, how cruel is it really? I'm not gonna throw the grenade again because I'm not stupid. I mean, I am stupid, but I'm not, I'm not gonna do it again. I say as I do it again 10 seconds later. Alright. I should keep my fucking helmet on. I made this big blah blah about keeping my helmet on. I'm not doing it. Um. Melt. I'm melting them. And that it's mine. It's all mine now. Do 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 do. I was actually explaining to Mercedes earlier. Uh, this is similar to my Mass Effect talkings, but I think I explained what a details versus drama first story is, and I was actually explaining that to Mercedes a little while ago because we we're working on something together. We got no guns. Oh, you have guns. Though. Oh God, Krogan. Uh, yeah, okay. Enemies everywhere! Enemies everywhere! Enemies everywhere! Go, go, go! Oh, Jesus Christ, on the cracker. Got him. I got him before he hit the enemy. I need to get neural shot. I hate strong ones! Have fun watching combat again. I'm much better at it this time, because I'm not in an enclosed space. Luckily, snipers are easy to kill. So easy. Go, go. That guy can do immunity. Get back here. Ah! He did the thing I said. He go, go, go. Oh, it's gone. Nope, that's the other guy behind him. Got him. Oh, 
Uh-huh. Oh. Well, what are you gonna do? I think we got him. I think we got him. So yeah, those look like just regular mercs. God, I have so much... <sighs> Crap. Just, just, just get rid of it. Huh. I'm gonna end up, like, destroying something valuable. I know it. Or, or just taking more crap, I know it. I know it. What's this? A medical kit. Crates. Uh, no, 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 no. Um, no, 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 no. I think the firestorm's good. Sorry, I'm just picking up crap now. Dead man. Ah, fighter of a live man. Ah. Hello. Stay back. I've got no grief with you. All I want is this bastard. Please. Oh, I'm sorry. There's an Stop echo on this. Mr. Tombs, you're really badly. You need help. Shut up. You don't get to lie. You know. Shepard. My God, Shepard, is that you? Is that an echo? Where's that coming from? Um, I guess it's okay. Did I mess up my, I don't know. Uh, sorry, uh, this guy knows Shepard and we don't know, but Shepard also knows. So we're gonna have to let Shepard fill in the blanks here. Tombs? But you were on a coast. I, I saw the Thresher mob pull you under. They took me, Shepard. The scientists. You can't prove any of this. I think this is the in-game audio just acting like this. See, they were running tests on the Thresher mobs. They let those things hit us just to watch and study. I woke up in a holding cell. The scientists were delighted I'd survived. Now they had someone to run tests on. So here's the thing. I don't know what the hell these scientists were, were doing. Because it's just like... Here's the thing with Cerberus in general. Because this guy's from Cerberus. He's... Cerberus is a group dedicated to studying weird science that is supposed to progress humanity in all their endeavors. But the problem is, they don't do that. They do weird experiments that just gets people killed. Like this one. Like, what did they learn from fighting the Thresher Maws? Like, what did they learn by having, like, 50 people die? And, like, having these two people alive? Like, what did they learn from that? That Thresher Maws kill things? Like, what was there to learn? What's the goal of that experiment? There is none. It's just it's just to come off as comically evil. Now, way back when this game came out, Cerberus didn't have this this big a track record. They had interesting ideas, but they were stupid and they failed. And then in Mass Effect 2, someone decided to say, "Oh, let's make that group and just make them bigger and make them more legitimate so that they can do all this stupid shit on a greater scale." And they're still stupid. Uh, but, so, you're not going to give it much to go on here. Like, you can believe Tombs if you want, especially if you're his friend, um, or you're supposed to be his friend, you know, you guys were in the same unit together. Um, he's telling the truth, the science, despite what the science is protesting, just like Garrus' uh, quest line. Uh, I'm going to say, what do you mean? What did they do to you, Tombs? You can't believe Tombs. He doesn't have any proof. I demand a fair trial. Commander Shepard was there. She knows the truth. Well, I know that there was a bunch of crazy Thresher Maws. So yeah, this, this audio uh, dialogue naturally assumes that Shepard was there, to be honest. Um, so it's kind of weird. So like this line, this man deserves to die, Shepard, for you, for me, for everyone else. Are you with me? I think. It might be bugged, but I usually get it. Um... So, I'm just gonna... Yeah. You're better than this, Tombs. You're not like them. Don't tell me who I am. You got away with a few scratches and a scary reputation. The rest of the unit died, and I was tortured for years, Shepard. You can't judge me. You don't have the right. Tombs, if I could have helped you on a coups, I would have. All I can do is help now. Let me. 
okay. I'm no murderer. They couldn't make me one. Just as long as he goes to Shepard's trial. ability and persuasion are ridiculous. Maybe the screaming will stop now. I don't know. Those bastards can't hurt you anymore. Joker, tell the Fifth Fleet we need a ship for pickup. Aye, aye, Commander. Yeah, his audio was fine. I think it's just this room. Like, this, this in-game level develops an echo for some reason. Tomb stares morosely at the floor, lost in his memories. You give the scientist a shove towards the door, your mission is complete. The Alliance Quartz will take it from here. And I'm pretty sure there's nothing in the room. Um, it's two down. Oh, I'm out here, I forget. So, that quest is okay, and it reveals a little bit about Shepard's background. But, like, this is what I'm talking about when I say that Mass Effect 1 has a lot of weird in-game mysteries that are self-explanatory and aren't that, like, complex. But, like, they always hint at the possibility there's more going on. Like, you never meet, like, a lot of the Cerberus operatives in question that are behind these things. You just meet, like, affiliates and mercenaries they hire. Uh, so, like, the impact of this is a long way off. And it's, it's very strange. And to build the, the next game on this fringe group that is really incompetent and, like, it makes sense to want to develop them more. But it would have made more sense to pick the Shadow Broker. It would have been made, pick, way more sense to pick the Shadow Broker. Let me see if I get dialogue. Message coming yeah, in. Here we go. Patching it through. I reviewed your report on the situation, Commander. I'm glad to see you were able to take Dr. Wayne in alive. Now we can put him on trial and get some answers. So, yeah, I, the best thing to do is to get answers about this weird rogue group because we already have more evidence of them doing other stuff with code. Like, we haven't done this quest yet, and I will make sure we do it, but, like, it's fucking weird. Fifth lead out. All right, um... Hold on. Let me exit out. So, yes, so Cerberus here is... In Mass Effect 1, Cerberus is a confusing group. Um, they don't have a lot of traction. They have some interesting angles and ideas. They're not a large part of the plot. They're more like a subplot fringe group in the universe that just participates here and there. And they're not very high, why, how, how, like highly known or widely associated with anything, really. The only people that really know about them publicly is the Alliance. Um, and that's because they, you know, they were a Black Ops group. But then in Mass Effect 2, apparently everyone knows about Cerberus. Everyone knows about Cerberus. It's, it's an astounding le leap of logic. So it's this. So this episode, honestly, should just be called Black and White, because it's it's very much dealing with nuances of certain organizations and methods of dealing with problems. Like Yaris understands that the world isn't black and white, and determine you know it needs measured approaches to certain problems, and you need to control how you react to problems rather than what you uh, rather than what the problem might incite you to do, or or how the problem might incite you to betray your own character, uh, and that's a serious issue. And that's, that's something that deals with not only identity, but, you know, political actions in the world and social actions in the world as well. Um, and Cerberus, very much like that, is a political organization that has an ideology. Well, they have an ideology in Mass Effect 2. In Mass Effect 1, their ideology is just, let's do weird shit for weird evil lulls. Uh, and that's, that's basically the core of their principle. And as Shepard here, you can ascertain, okay, this group needs to be taken down. But do I want them, in this specific instance, for Shepard's background, do I want them to answer and do I want to explore what their origin is? Or do I just want to wipe them off the face of the earth? And that's actually a larger Mass Effect theme in general. So Mass Effect 1 does a really good job of like having its minor quests reinforce the major quest lines with themes of brainwashing, conditioning, um, dealing with social entities or political entities and how you either ally with them or take care of them or you know make them go away with the Krogan, Solarians, Turians, First Contact War, Cerberus, um, beings like the Thorian, which is, you know, there are a lot of decisions that are made for you. You're not allowed to, you know, betray certain aspects of being human or like ally with the Thorian. But, you know, there are interesting themes that are brought up that Mass Effect 2 at the very least allows you to dig deeper into. Uh, so that about says it was for this episode. Uh, we had some minor issues, but next episode we're probably going to do. I had to flip up the coin between Tally and Kohoku, his Cerberus things, just to continue because I'm already kind of talking about Cerberus. So 
I, I might just continue with that, honestly, yeah. The more I think about it, the more I'm probably going to do that. Alright, so next episode, we'll probably come back to Cerberus. Then we'll finish up tallies, which... Actually, we could probably do those in the same episode. Uh, so long as I just do most of the busy work of, of tallies mission in between. So I'll probably do that. Um, then I'll do... Yes, then I'll get... Then I'll do Cerberus. Then I'll do tallies. And then at that point, all we have to do is bring down the sky. And we're back on the main plot. I'm sorry this is taking so long to diverge from, but... You know, I feel like it's it's giving us a little bit. It, this is Mass Effect One. It's we're to kind of like unfortunately there are there are unfocused parts of the game, and we're kind of here dealing with them. You know, this isn't the whole game, but the 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 strengths of the plot kind of teeter away from itself when it talks about its own importance, unfortunately. But um, I've rambled on enough. I'll see you guys on the next episode of Huffle and Stuff, whether it be the retrospective or one of our other things with Mercy or me. And I hope you enjoy. Leave a comment. Tell me what you like, what you didn't like. Uh, hit that bell. Subscribe. Like whatever that bell does, just hit it. Just, just touch something on the screen, even with your, just your hands. Just touch it. Just like really get a good feel for it. Like get in there. Don't don't be don't be shy either. All right. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.